Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of I Am Legion for Dying Light 1 and 2. My name is Jason, the creator of the mod, and I'm here with another update. It's been a crazy week. Thank you guys so much who are aware of all the ongoing EULA challenges. Thank you guys so much for reaching out and continuing to support this work, supporting the mod, uh, and helping you know provide support for where you would like to see this go in the future it's been a it's been a challenging week understanding with this new eula with future uh changes at techland what the opportunity is actually going to be for creating this type of work for the mod uh or for the game rather and it's uh it's really put kind of a a a, a halt on uh on development on this side and that's been a challenge because it's something that i've really been enjoying working on for you guys uh and it's something that i've been a part of for almost two years now uh and actually have gotten pretty uh, pretty in depth with the uh, with the game at this point, and so uh, as such, it's just been a challenge to uh, to see this shake up. But I do want to just kind of summarize that for the latest information of what's going on, I am trying to share that information uh, over on the main page of the Nexus and on the Discord. So for the latest and greatest information, uh, you can jump over to the Discord channel where you can find the latest updates, and then also on the Nexus page, I am keeping an rolling update of what is going on with the mod, what is Techland saying, what does the actual EULA say, and what I am not agreeing to as far as the EULA goes and future development. So without diving too much into uh, the mod policy, you know, I want to talk about this issue, but I think it's one of those things that until we know the full scope of the changes that Techland is putting out uh, and how that's going, I don't know if that's really um, something that I want to dive into deep other than to say uh, it's something that has personally affected me due to the ongoing relationship with Techland and trying to negotiate and find out how to design and create content that could one day be available to console players. Uh, this was supposed to be a bridging opportunity and, and, a, and kind of a moment of, yes, we got it. This is awesome. We're driving forward. And then we read the EULA agreement and it's kind of shocking. Uh, and so just a, a quick summary on that is, is that while I understand and you'll read this everywhere I post it, but while I do understand that some companies are choosing uh, to basically take creative rights away from their modders and doing so because of protection and, and legal, legal protection, I do understand that probably the biggest challenge here is, is that language was not clearly outlined when I began this project. It was not clearly outlined when I first started talking to Techland about the acquisition or the official support of this mod. Uh, and it's only recently come to light. And the more that I've read through the policy, the more it's made me concerned about what rights I have as a creative. And so if you're a mod designer and you're interested in modding the game, I would encourage you to just make sure you review the mod policy, make sure that that falls in the limits of what you want as a creative and where you're trying to go with your work and your design, uh, just because it's important to keep that creative rights to the original designer and to allow us to understand what we're, what and who we're writing for. Uh, especially, you know, your time is important. So to move into the latest version, so even with all this controversy, probably the biggest thing for me is, is that they did push out an update at the same time that they pushed out the EULA agreement. I completely uninstalled the game. I didn't agree to the EULA agreement. I still don't. Um, and during that, since that time, I've been working with the community to better understand what's changed, where you actually have to sign the EULA agreement. Uh, and I was able to get into a version of the game that I felt was able to properly allow me to update and get another version out to you guys. So I have put that version out to you guys. Uh, I have tested. It may still have some bugs left over. I apologize. That's something that here in the coming months, uh, weeks, hopefully we can identify a path forward uh, with Techland so I can get back to designing for you guys. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, this latest version should be stable enough for you guys to continue to play. Uh, and I'm actually pretty happy with it because it is the pre-release of 1.5, something I've been working towards since June. And so I want to dive forward uh, into that a little bit more with you guys. So this latest installer is the 1.5 pre-installer. When you launch, just for those of you who are returning to the mod, if you haven't been here for a little while, uh, as always, you can find the latest uh, updates and what is involved in this latest version uh, under here under the change log, along with links. So probably one of the biggest exciting things with this latest update or these last couple of updates is the mod config. Super excited that I was able to get that out to you guys and continue to get in feedback loops 
from you guys on that. Thank you so much for those of you who jumped on and let me know some of the challenges that you've been facing with things like resolution, uh, some of the things even like not having the textures or not the textures, I apologize, the typeface and the font installed on your system. I appreciate the feedback and the support and we'll get through this together. So with these upcoming or with these latest settings uh, here under the installer, you now have the ability to set vanilla. Uh, what that does is it installs all the new custom content, the flamethrowers, the armor, um, all the different weapons, all the different items without necessarily changing any of the difficulty or any of the detection or really anything else. It's really only recommended uh, for people that want to play the mod and then for whatever reason potentially switch back to a vanilla playthrough to be able to test. And so if you want to be able to see what the van vanilla gameplay is like and then switch back to the mod, you can do that very easily by just running the installer again and switching to vanilla. Uh, the next tier after that is Casual Survivor. So Casual Survivor was originally kind of like my vanilla go-to. It was supposed to be closest to the vanilla playthrough. Uh, the challenge over time was is that with this latest version of Good Night and Good Luck, the world has become very uh, flooded with volatiles at night. For some people's gameplay and gameplay style, they just actually want to play parkour. And so because of that... I apologize. Because of that, I've created the Casual Survivor, which will allow you to go in here and play through uh, with less spawns. So I've tried to lower those spawn rates. And if you want even less volatiles, I will mention that over on the Discord channel, you can actually go over to the Discord channel, the I Am Legion Reborn channel, and there's a config share section where I've added a, an additional mod that you can add to the mod that will actually remove volatiles from the night. Uh, from the spawn system rather uh, they'll still come in through the different encounters and the quests and all those things but it'll help make the world even a little more safer if you want that and then next is survivor highly recommend that you start with survivor even if it's your first time playing through Highly recommend starting with this as it expands on almost every system inside the base game and allows you to experience the game uh, closer to a little bit what some of us were hoping would be in the original game when we first played it. Uh, so most of this has been built out with feedback from the community. So as always, your feedback is appreciated and we'll continue to get that and get, hopefully get those updates in uh, as uh, you guys <laughs> send those over. So next, uh, another one I want to mention is in War Zones. So if you're not familiar with War Zones, War Zones was an optional that was added on to the mod a while back that allowed you to spawn during the day. You would get a, a drastic increase on human spawns uh, during the day, especially in that main city in Villador. And the idea behind this was is that during the day, the factions are fighting to take back the city. And uh, what's really exciting about this version is, is that it allows you to go down the street and basically encounter massive groups of PK or massive groups of renegades or all the new factions that I've added to the game. You can find those walking the street, and the cool part about that is, is that as you work with those guys, you can actually hang around and actually help clear the streets, and you can actually make them even larger groups by continuing to scout with them and banding together, and you can actually end up with a lot of PK, a lot of survivors, all working to take back the city, which can actually be a lot of fun. So let me go ahead and dive in. Uh, also, lastly, the pathway system is a quick way to get a different type of startup. If you're coming back to the game and you don't want to start over fresh and you want to actually skip ahead a little bit, you can use the pathway system to go ahead and uh, get items when you first start the game. You can also use it to now get skills and some basic things started beforehand. Uh, and the best way to get this is, is that for each one of these, if you skip the prologue and you go ahead and jump past, then you will get those new skill sets uh, when you load in. I will mention that if you use pathways and you don't skip the prologue, uh, you will not get the same number of skills and the same items because there's actually a glitch in the system where uh, the tutorial systems force the menus to have to select certain ones and because of that uh, certain skills certain items and because of that I wasn't able to actually give you as many things as I was hoping so skipping the prologue is the best way to get a hold of those for my international support this is an ongoing effort from the community to add to an Excel uh, or a Google Sheets 
form uh, that is a translation for every main thing in the mod over to various different languages. If those, if your language isn't supported in the game, you can at least use this reference to go look up what the item is and see the translation so you can kind of understand what I meant. Um, if you select one of these other options, you should have very rough translations to your different language. It does not have the special character, so I do apologize. Uh, you may need to uh, continue to do, you know, basically identify the best you can what it's saying by the lack of special characters or just use the English version for now until a better way is figured out to get those special characters added for the mod. So if we go ahead and install this, you can select whatever, whatever options you like during this time. Once you hit next, it will summarize what you've selected and you can hit install. When you're installing, it will now create uh, two new applications inside of your main folder. And when you're done with this, it'll give you a nice little summary screen, mention the Patreon support. Huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters, especially them supporting me through all these ongoing changes with Techland. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for your support. You'll get two new shortcuts, including the uninstall, so you can use the uninstall if you did not get the pathway correct. You'll also get a folder reference. That folder will allow you to immediately get to the Dying Light root, and when you bring that root up, you're going to see that these applications actually live at that base level, um, and you're able to actually launch those from the desktop, or you can launch them from inside the folder. What I would highly recommend is that if you're running this for the first time, I highly recommend that you go ahead and get that uh, mod config set up. The mod config, in, in my opinion, humble as it is, is very powerful at this point to allow you to customize the game exactly how you want to within the mod. I've tried to make most of the mod itself configurable with this setup. So there's really not a lot of things left that this can't do uh, to support what you're trying to do inside the game. There are some things, but I have tried to support the community over the last year and a half that I've had the mod config and I've got a lot of great options in there for you. So when you first run the application, I'm not forcing it to detect the pathway that you just installed to. In the event that you installed this into the wrong location, that's more cleanup that you're gonna have to do if you installed into the wrong location. So to help with that, I have set this up to where you can just use the shortcut. So at any time, you can just simply use that shortcut that's installed there on the desktop and hit select folder. And when you do that, it's gonna actually go through and read the information inside the mod and bring up this mod config for you. So the idea here is that I wanted to give you options to be able to set whatever you want within the mod. And all of those can be found within the different sections and then the different tabs uh, under each. Now, namely with this new update, uh, and I do realize that there's a typo in this. Uh, I did not get a chance to fix that yet. I'll make sure to clean that up here in the future. But one of the things that you can do with this new performance tab under the world spawn setting is you can actually go in here and determine how many AI spawn inside the game. What this is important for is that I, I realized uh, while testing and creating the hordes update that you can actually get a lot more enemies inside the map uh, without issue. I mean, once I figured out how to do this and set this up, I mean, it was like, I guess I will never be playing anywhere near the default again. I think the default was set for mid-range systems, and I wish that they had set this to where it would scale based on the uh, performance set, uh, but it's probably buggy after you get past a certain point. But for you guys who want to go out there and explore and try new things, I highly recommend that you try to set this count to a different number uh, and find out what your system performance is, where you're trying to get your 60 frames or whatever frame count you're trying to get. Play with this number. All you have to do is, is once you've gone in here and you've set this number, you can set that number to whatever you want. And then all you have to do is hit save mod pack down here at the bottom. It'll let you know uh, that it's injected into the game uh, and you can just keep moving uh, forward from there. But one of the big things here is just to make sure uh, I'd notice, for example, when I just did that, that I did not get a summary screen. And again, these are all things that I would continue to dial forward on if we continue to get the support that is needed uh, to make sure that this mod is supported correctly. These are all things I was trying to iron out. Iron out. 
but for example, it did let me know that values changed, but for some reason it did not say that it injected into the folder itself. So in this case, uh, you have two options here. You can load the actual dot uh, I, uh, the I am legion underscore settings .mth file, or you can load a data pack too, or a data two pack. If, if you encounter any issues at any time, you can always set the directory again, or you can go in here and try to load the data pack to make sure that this is injecting in properly. So when I did that, it looks like, again, it's still not quite injecting. So we're going to go to ph source. We're going to load that data too. And then we're going to hit save. And it did it that time. So um, it's interesting. I'm also getting this header uh, warning here as well. So there are some things that with this latest version, I didn't crawl through a lot, but it's good that I'm seeing these for the first time on video, just so that you're aware these are things that are going to start popping up, especially as I'm, I'm not supporting the mod as much while this EULA is getting figured out. But I am letting you know that these are the ways that you can go in here and fix these issues so you can continue to use this mod config and keep it relevant. So loading that uh, mod config and setting that direct path did work. And you can see here that it says when the values are changed and it says that it's injected into the file. You can also see when you actually go inside the root to the ph folder source, you'll actually see that that data too has now been updated. So now in the future, anytime we set anything specific inside the mod config, it's going to continue to update and it will continue to allow us to mod the game without having to worry that this isn't working. If for whatever reason you want to create a custom version of this, you can always go inside your data too. You can use WinRare uh, to open up those pack files, or I think you can also do zip, but uh, that's a different case. Um, and then inside of that is the imlegionsettings.mth. You can also extract this file onto your desktop anywhere you want it, and you can load that in manually as well. So if in the future you want to have backups of these you know, stored somewhere, you can actually load them in. It'll parse it, and everything is being dynamically generated inside this application. So I am going to have to figure out a little bit in the... <laughs> I am very curious what it found to uh, to get this header byte. Um, very interesting. But now that this is actually um, loaded in and it's injected properly, I'm going to go back to say set directory. And let's try again to set that directory and see if this reloads. So it should clear everything out. It's going to reload. Let's go back to world spawns and make a change. So you can see where that change did stick. Let's hit save. And there you go. It's now properly injecting into the into the mod pack. So sometimes these little errors happen. It has to do with how it's getting access to the directory and how it's trying to make sure that it has everything that it needs to run successfully. I do apologize that there are still some hiccups here. I'm finding them as we go. People are reporting them every now and then, but I just want to let you know that is the best way that you can find out or you can continue to use the software even if the support falls away here in the future. So as you go through back to this, uh, so as you're finding the different uh, settings in here, for example, with performance, I've added uh, two new local configs, uh, which I just noticed uh, everything in this one video um, did not load and it's where it got messed up when I reloaded in that directory. So what it's doing is it's actually creating and storing all of these files inside of this state.json. My guess is, is that if I just close the application and just launch it again, it's going to get that path. It's going to get everything that is needed here, and we can get back to what we are doing here. Um, not sure exactly what happened there when it got hung up, but let's make sure it's got everything. It automatically loaded that directory. Let's go ahead and try to make a change and see if that injects in. It did inject in. So we're back up and rolling. So I apologize for the slowdown, but that is a good example that we did live of how to fix small issues with this here in the future. Joys of uh, doing all these things live and finding bugs as you go. So 
Uh, if you want to use the new local configs that I've included, when you load these up, you should see that I've also included this high count, high hordes uh, config as well. So you can go in here and hit load. It'll go through and it'll tell you at the bottom what it's actually setting and where it's making those changes. But I've included one so that you could go ahead and try to load this in and then go test out very quickly whether or not uh, this actually worked on your system or whether or not uh, it starts to run really poorly, you should be able to actually get a very large amount of hordes by making this setting. Uh, and I thought for fun, I would go ahead and launch the game and actually show you what this looks like uh, while continuing to talk to you guys about what these different settings do. So we've loaded the high count, high hordes. What that's gonna do is it's gonna set high count here. And then over on the hordes tab, it's gonna actually set these settings as well. And when I close back down, I'll talk to you a little bit about these. So let's go ahead and launch the game. And actually for performance sake, I'm gonna actually increase this even further. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save to mod pack. So you can see here that it's gone ahead and made those changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the game and we'll continue to discuss while I show you what that will look like. So as we continue to look through here, you can make a lot of different settings across the mod config, hundreds of options uh, that have been set over the last year and a half of work on this mod to allow you to go in here. If you want to set the different tiers of the enemies that spawn throughout the world, if you want to set their difficulty, you can do so pretty much flawlessly by using this now. I've tried to go through and thank you for everyone who submitted small syntax errors that have occurred as well. I think I've shorn most of those up uh, as, as much as possible to really make sure that, for example, probably the most common one is that if someone went in here and they didn't know the difference between a float value uh, and an integer value, uh, you, it will now set that integer value and it will force it to always add that decimal point, which is something that would crash the game normally uh, for different ones that allow you to, for example, to set uh, the different, so if we go over here to say noise spawns and we go to like the day hunter, uh, actually having a list of all the different enemies that you can actually spawn here, making that also have the correct formatting. Probably the biggest thing that's actually influenced the mod config over time is not being able to actually store all of those settings that everyone is making and making sure you can keep those uh, with all the future updates. This system will allow you to hopefully for the foreseeable future uh, make those changes and continue to get those updates in uh, to where you can either merge or load those configs without any issue uh, and that way you can make sure you save and store the settings that you have that are unique to how you want to play the game. Um, so as this loads in we'll go ahead and check this out and I'll show you guys the difference uh, between the two and one thing's one thing to look for when it comes to the hordes so now that I've upped my spawn count to a thousand around that radius that's around the player uh, it is now going to load in a very large volume of enemies uh, and you can see that it probably also has to do with the recording uh, but you can see here that adding this is also with the oh good lord this is also with war zones uh enabled and this is the first time i've tried it with war zones as well so uh i never actually tried this out and i forgot that i selected war zones so what you're seeing here is just a smorgasbord of human <laughs> enemies fighting it out inside the city along with some zombies um so that is something that in the future, uh, if you want to play War Zones, uh, the Horde update will also need to be balanced to where you may have to make specific settings in order for uh, the mod to be able to support. <laughs> Look at the amount of humans that are running around out here. This is preposterous. Okay, so we've concluded that when trying to set that higher and you have War Zones active, you're going to get this... Uh, Pretty much around every block you're just going to have humans trying to survive because they're getting spawned inside the horde. So let's actually go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and close the game out really quick. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove uh, that setting. So we're going to go ahead and remove uh, war zones from the install here. So let's go ahead and remove. I believe this is going to be my data six. No, that's going to be my other loader. So it's actually going to be this one. So my data four. 
So we'll go ahead and remove my data for and let's try this again. I'll continue to talk to you guys about the different settings uh, while, while that loads back in. So with the uh, world spawn system, if you are using the horde system, as I just mentioned, it's basically taking the groups of zombies that I've now balanced in the base uh, spawns to be able to properly pack them into hordes, as you were seeing with that one spawn group. Um, it is mainly filled with humans and zombies because that's how War Zones is actually set up, is that it's utilizing the spawn data to actually spawn humans out onto the map itself. Uh, in the future, I had plans for how to do this a little bit more um, with a little bit more tact, uh, just because the spawn system is kind of chaotic in nature uh, when it does create these things. And it does actually end up with a couple of bugs uh, that I've noticed previously of where it'll actually uh, hang on a specific spawn and then you get the same spawn over and over and over in groups. Uh, and so just be aware that uh, as again, once again, another bug live uh, while we're doing this, uh, War Zones does not work with setting these high horde settings uh, due to how it is implemented. So if you do want War Zones installed, you will need to use um, more of the standard spawn system uh, and not this horde approach. Uh, you can probably lower that down to where it's groups of... Um, just for reference of what I'm talking about here, on the Horde tab, I've got you know groups of 225, one to 225 uh, enemies spawning uh, at any given time. What this results in is these massive hordes uh, throughout the day that will slowly start to roam around the city. It's probably one of my new favorite things about 1.5 is that you're gonna end up with these very large clusters of enemies that are going to be spawning in and just kind of gathered together. Now, for those of you that are not super uh, fond of this approach that uh, say that this is too many enemies for you during the day, that's exactly why I made sure not to push this out to where this was automatically set up. I wanted this to be something that you guys can set uh, through the mod config and kind of make that decision uh, if you wanted that or not. So that's not something that uh, I definitely want, didn't want to force that on you guys, uh, but just give you guys the ability to choose whether or not to have that inside of your game. So as you roam the city, the fun result of this is, is that you will get hordes randomly spawning throughout the world, uh, and some of those can be on top of buildings as well, so you get some really cool uh, enemies falling off the ledges and trying to get at you. Um, also here in the future, I have plans for another fun way for these hordes to start roaming the cities. Uh, at this time, most of those plans are delayed until I hear back from Techland to determine whether or not uh, it even makes sense to do so with that work. Uh, or if that's going to be something that, again, these hours can be spent on many other projects uh, if that work is just going to be lifted. So um, it's nothing personal to them. It's just uh, there's lots of things to do, very little time these days. Um, so showing you guys, I think you guys uh, can also check out the trailer that I put out showing these hordes. Uh, I believe I actually had around this number for that video. Uh, I have gotten up to around 2,000 spawns working in the city. Probably the biggest thing that slowed this down was the uh, gas tanks. And so when combining the gas tanks with this environment, you know, you did start to, you kill one little group and they basically just start a chain reaction of exploding. Uh, I did reduce that down to where you should not have as many gas tanks spawning into the world in general. Uh, and this should help with that issue so that you just get these fun clusters uh, of actual regular zombies uh, so that you can see those guys uh, warring through the city. It's just a lot of fun to see and it's definitely how I prefer to play the game. Uh, is to have just these clusters of enemies that they're fine at a distance, but then once they start to actually wander down the road, uh, you either need to get up high or, uh, or try to fall back on your priority uh, to move these away. And it's one of the things that you don't see very often in games is the actual horde concept because I know Days Gone is probably my favorite for that uh, because it basically has just kind of a no-wins uh, solution here. I mean, you can 
actually use your weapons to try to take out all these different guys to use fire explosives whatever that may be okay. but ultimately it may make more sense to actually retreat from this area than to sit here and try to take on that many enemies uh, and that's really what it's meant to do is is to add that little mechanic to the game so to show you guys kind of the power of doing this if you want to go in here and say you're you're testing this out you start playing and then the balance is just not quite where you want it you can still leave these AI count up higher and then just res reduce the amount of, of the hordes. So say for example, we actually just want to go through here and say one through 15. Uh, and another uh, good thing to mention here is that for the daytime spawns, the distance between these hordes is actually determined through this density. So for example, if you do have this very large number of hordes added to your game, ignore where I've reduced it, you should go in here and, for example, set this to something like 15, 20, something like that. So it actually spreads out these groups um, across the city. Then for uh, back to this, uh, if we don't want uh, a super high amount of enemies, we can actually go in here and do this. And actually, now that I think about it, it probably wouldn't hurt to also give the potential condition where no zombies spawn. Uh, so it doesn't always have to be a minimum of one. You could have no zombies spawning in that area. And we'll just kind of mix and match as well. So we go here. So we'll do this one as a larger group. And then the, my favorite one is probably this run-throughs because the th run-throughs allows you to actually set most of the bridgeways uh, between the buildings. I think that's mainly how they use it. And then also I've noticed that you end up with bridges having large amounts of enemies. Uh, and so it's actually kind of fun to leave that up higher because those tend to be the areas that have more shade. Um, and so it almost makes sense. Now, for example, with like the flooded area, you could leave these really high. Um, that's the area that is the actual swamp biome that as I've been calling it, but the flooded area where you drain uh, the water, if you want to leave that uh, as is, you can. Uh, so that way, when you go to that area, it continues to have the highest density or population of, uh, of zombies who appear like they've been underwater uh, for a long period of time with the, with the new biome swamp creatures that I've created. Um, and for the performance, uh, one of the things to keep in mind is, is that I did add the ability to set the physics here as well. So you can, for example, spawn a very high amount of enemies, but then also reduce the physics on them uh, down below a specific level. If you start encountering a lot of ragdoll uh, clipping, if you start to encounter a lot of uh, s slowing down on your system, you can also still balance that out inside your, uh, your computer. You don't actually have to... Uh, to it's not a one or the other you can balance it as needed for your uh, system so let's see what this looks like uh, probably the most fun here is uh, is that now that this spawn system is pretty much entirely now on the mod config uh, you can actually have a lot of fun going in here and setting the density setting the different groupings uh, to try to get a different combination of enemy groups uh, during the day and they show up a little bit different inside the big city versus inside of old villador uh, and so it's actually a fun way to kind of have an immersive environment now, to my knowledge, those two things are not completely separate. Um, I do have the potential of doing that in the future, of saying these are the spawn systems for Old Villador, these are the ones for the new city. Uh, that's just not been something that's implemented yet and something that, again, we'll see how uh, the latest version from Techland goes uh, to determine if, or the new version of the EULA is to determine if that'll get done. So you can see here now that we have, instead of those massive groups, we now have these smaller clusters of enemies, but they still kind of get moved uh, into these clusters and you can continue to modify that as you see fit. So if you want, for example, uh, one, one thing I was trying earlier was is that for like a lot of these open areas, I think these use uh, some of the more common spawns. So say for example, if we wanted to go in here to the horde uh, and you wanted to remove some of the other ones, you could go in here and say, for example, uh, near bases that these are lower and uh, here in the park actually boost that up. So anywhere where there's a park, there's actually a, a good amount of them 
hanging out. But then for like the easy zones, maybe in the medium zones, maybe we drop those down. And then for like the very hard areas, maybe we set that at like 125. And then for the run through, set that at like 85. And even for the hard, let's set that down to like four. And this way we can kind of test and see where this ends up being on the map itself. So we'll go ahead and say save to the mod pack. We'll go ahead and hit play. And at any time for your testing, if you want to go ahead and figure out different balances, at any time you can go in here and hit save config. And it's going to ask you if you want to overwrite this other one because that's the one we loaded. You can hit no. And then we'll say like uh, spawn horde config one. And you know, for now we'll call it that. It'll show up in the list and we can continue to change and update it. We can create different variations of it. And so that way in the future we find, oh, we really enjoyed this type of horde in old Villador. So for example, if you wanted to find a, con a good config balance for old Villador, again, this is all if I don't get time to continue on development and actually expand these systems you could create configs that are specific to old Villador. So as you're playing through the old Villador quest, you have a config that you set before you start playing. And then you could have one for the main city if you know that you're gonna go start to dive through the main city. Um, all of those things are things that I'm hoping are become much more fluid here in the future so that you can load your config and hit apply to game and then launch the game and, you know, at any time do what I'm doing right here. So you're probably also wondering how I get out. I just always alt F4 <laughs> in and out of the game as well. Uh, it makes it easier so that anything that's being done inside the game is not actually saving. Uh, and that actually makes it easier to make sure your save games are not getting impacted by anything that you're, that you're setting. So you can see now when we're moving through here, we just kind of have a clear city. And then I turn around and there's bigger groups kind of scattered around over here. My guess is, is that if I go run around for a little while, I'll find one area where it's just completely covered by enemies versus other ones that are not. Also, I did notice that it seems like some of the spawn data seems like it is uh, it is stored into your save game. So sometimes you can get weird glitching with how, how you set things. So the, the fastest way to fix that is to just run down the road a little ways uh, and then come back. It'll, it'll help make sure that everything kind of resets. But here's a good example where, so we've lowered down kind of the main body of zombies throughout the map. Uh, and this way you would always be kind of worried that you round a corner and find one of those massive hordes uh, moving towards uh, your player randomly rather than just it always being the different enemies. But that's kind of the idea is that it gives you the ability uh, to set things how you want. And that's always what the mod config is meant to do is to just give you guys options and allow you to set the game how you want to set it. So uh, let's dive into the next part of the mod update. So for this latest update, um, I did go through and create a new armorer. So uh, I know you guys probably saw that in the update notes. It looks like um, he's not in my thing here. So let's actually head towards a base. Perfect, right here. So when you go into your new stash, you should see a new uh, armor icon with the rest of the traders. So let's go ahead and bring that up. So this is him, the armorer. He is on a cooldown, so that way you can't basically just grab all the items in the world. Uh, you can actually, hopefully that helps your balancing a little bit so you're not just using this guy all the time to buy all the new custom armors. But basically the idea is, is that the armor system is meant to make you feel like there are special armors being created inside the game to help defend you against the world. Um, it's not meant to be something that you immediately find everywhere. These are like custom armors that are being created. Uh, and there are, uh, there are groups out there that are creating these armors so that you can uh, get hold of them.
One of the biggest issues with spawning the traders is people trying to spawn them inside the base. If it does not appear, if you throw this down and it doesn't appear right away, more than likely that is where there is a uh, there's an issue with the actual install and it's not properly set up. And so what's going to happen is, is that's going to not properly load in uh, and that's actually going to be messed up for you when you try to load. Now I did just notice when I tried to do this on this version of the game, uh, it looked like for whatever reason that list did not load in. So, again, after multiple things testing last night, let's see if we have another bug in the game. What can I do for you? Nope, you working here. So as I was saying, if these guys load in and they're and they're not actually properly spawning, then more than likely what the issue is is that it's not uh, properly getting the. Maybe it's because he just didn't have anything that time. Let me see if that's the case. Uh, it is set to a probability, and so there is a chance that he could have uh, nothing, but that should be slim to non-existent. So let me actually go. And I guess I'm not going to be able to without my Patreon content. It's always a little something while I'm trying to do my videos. So everything's loading in proper. Um, I'll show you guys this while I'm at it uh, so that you guys are also aware. So inside of, if you go in here and for whatever reason uh, you do manage to make a syntax error, the easiest way to find that syntax error is to compare what the original value is to what it's being changed to. It should show you that, for example, if this shows that it's wrapped in quotations and this one is not, then that's probably your error. Um, and so anytime you create a custom config, just make sure to kind of keep an eye on the things that you're setting. Make sure that you're paying attention to the default values that are below it, around it. Uh, if it's if one of these things is not like the other, so to speak, uh, then that probably means that there is a bug in there. Uh, if you go to Documents, and then you go to Dying Light 2, Out, Logs, you can actually find all, it does this every single time you run the game, it'll create a crash log. If you open this up, it'll also tell you which mods you used. I like to just search for error. So if we go here and we search error, it'll let us know if there was any specific errors that it found. It looks like it didn't find anything, uh, which is interesting. I'm not sure for that one guy, I'm not sure why. He didn't get his kit. Give me one second here. Let's go over here and we'll find out. This will also allow me a moment to show off the Patreon content as well. So not a problem. So we'll go ahead and add that content back and let's go ahead and launch again. Uh, I don't believe there's anything else that I wanna set here for you guys to see. Uh, for the new armor system inside the uh, trader and loot system, it's using the outfits section uh, currently. So everything under the outfits is also setting the armor chances to spawn. Uh, if that helps any of you guys uh, be able to determine how you have this outfit set up inside your config. I have tried to set these up to where if they spawn inside the world, uh, it's really meant for you to be like a, oh shit, I found one kind of moment. Uh, there's hundreds of different ones that I've added. I hope it adds a lot of enjoyment to the game and kind of fills out some of those uh, areas where uh, the windbreakers weren't quite fulfilling your need to look like a armored badass. So let's go ahead and hit continue. And I'll run down uh, the list here in a second and show you guys some of the new armors. There's also a lot of other work that uh, that has not been added yet. So um, the utilities uh, items in particular, an entire category of utility items did not get added on this pass. Um, I've currently only added the armor for the uh, 1.5 update. When 1.5 does eventually drop, I'm hoping to also include all of the clothing items, the utility items, uh, things all the way from different goggle systems, like division goggle systems, to rebreathers, to gas masks, um, to different things uh, like having weapon harnesses on your legs, um, 
let's see, actually having camos so that you can put guts on yourself so that way uh, the enemies are less likely to smell you. Uh, there's all sorts of things that I've developed for 1.5 that have just not fully been tested and, and set up how I want to with the with the config, or not the config rather, but the actual skills and stats. And so those were not released in this latest version uh, and not until I have more time uh, and support to actually get those done. So with the Patreon content installed, I'm gonna actually go and grab my, my traders and let's make sure that they're actually working here. Doesn't matter how many times you test, it matters about all the times that you thought you test, you did test, you had everything working, and then you released and it no longer worked. There we go. Okay, so it is working, uh, just for whatever reason, that one guy did not get those armors. So basically the idea is that under each one, what I've tried to set up is you should be able to actually go and read the name, but then you should also be able to go and read uh, the actual description, and it should tell you exactly what type of armor it is and what it is, uh, so that way you have a better understanding of, of what the visuals are. Um, currently, there's not a way to preview the armors. I wish there was, uh, so that way you could kind of see what you're getting first. Um, but currently, uh, without having the ability to add custom textures, and at this point, uh, I highly doubt that that feature will be coming uh, in, in the the near future uh, and so because of that I hope there's been enough uh, descriptors here for example like this one is a motocross helmet motorcycle helmet and a scout headgear um, so you should be able to actually go and read and in the description for example this says is a baseball cap with a leather mouth guard and head strap uh, underneath that I've actually added also a stat system so that you can kind of see what the armor class is and then what the perks are for each one uh, with each armor that is not a legendary so I am and I apologize there is still some clipping issues uh, that I would like some more time to work on with the stat system uh, so you know hopefully here in the future we'll get those added also the fact that some of these have so many skills uh, as you can see here it actually stacks up pretty heavy there as far as the uh, the different things that this thing does but really uh, those are summaries that I wish I could actually tell you all of the things that every single one of them does um, on each item but it would actually uh, take forever to read the list uh, and so hopefully here in the future there'll be a better way that I can display that in the summary when you're actually wearing it so for example if you actually go uh, to your stats you could actually see um, a good amount of those stats but you should be able to see um, a kind of a good build up here uh, in the other section that lets you know uh, what your current stats are from the armor. So that's actually been pretty exciting to be able to get that to where that showed up properly uh, inside the screen. Um, when you're going through, if you find the legendary versions of this armor, uh, the legendary versions are basically the same thing scaled and properly balanced with their stats and their actual skills changed in the code itself. Uh, so when you actually find legendary gear, each one has kind of its own different unique perks, but one of the biggest things is, is that they've lost their negative effects. And so I see there that even on the stats there, it didn't show properly where it's not showing the premium, but even wearing that heavy gear, you will be able to run and move just like you would if you were not wearing this armor or if you were playing the vanilla game. So kind of a fun way to allow you to still move like you would in the vanilla game while wearing the heavy armor. On the other hand, if you don't find the heaviest or you don't find the highest quality versions of these items, you will be forced to wear it with different effects for each one. So as you have something like light armor and you, let's actually throw on a light helmet here as well. So each one of these things stack on each other. So as you're wearing the different light armors, uh, you'll notice that you'll be able to move a lot faster in the light armor. You'll be able to have all the same kind of stamina. The difference is, is that you should have some resistances as far as damage resistances, but then also when it comes to things like swimming and gliding, uh, you can sometimes notice that certain ones that are made of heavier materials will drain your gliding stamina faster. Certain ones that 
that are heavier will drop you to the bottom of the ocean floor a lot faster. Um, it's just kind of a mix based on the material qualities of each armor. So each armor was actually gone through and every plastic, you know, every piece of metal. So for example, with this one, it's plastic, but then it's also got reinforced metal on it. So because it's got reinforced metal on it, I have adjusted the stats to where it accounts for the weight that comes from the different types of metal. Try to go hardcore with this one. As you're finding ones that are like heavier kits, so here's a medium armor. So if we take a medium armor and we'll throw like, we'll actually take the helmet off. If we jump into the water with a medium armor, you'll start to see that the stamina drains a lot faster when under the water. So if you're down underneath the water and you've got that medium armor, it's going to wear you down much faster to swim. You need to stay towards the top of the water to uh, make sure you don't drown. Uh, this is really to make you feel the weight of this armor, but also when you're trying to escape through underwater passages, the key here is, is that all you need to do is simply just remove this armor from your player and it'll be like you're moving like you were before. Next, we have heavy armors. With heavy armors, basically, it punishes you for falling in the water. If you have a heavy piece of armor, and each one is balanced different, so certain armors will have more uh, more sinking factors. Uh, other ones will than other ones. Uh, so, for example, this guy uh, is going to sink a lot faster than one of the other uh, heavy armors, and so just start to get to know uh, the capabilities of your different armor pieces. And I can see here where I'm actually getting a pretty bad clip from these other armors or from these other uh, outfit pieces. So you can see here that I jumped in the water and I'm basically getting pulled to the bottom uh, and I'm not able to go up and I'm also losing health because I'm drowning because I put on heavy armor and then fell into the water. So if you remove that armor, you can swim back up to the top, but your stamina will still be at zero. Uh, and so while you are still underneath the water, you're going to continue to drown until you get back up and get your breath uh, from falling in the water. So just kind of a fun, I tried to be fair with some of those things, so it's not going to immediately kill you. Um, but if you get that same armor and you've got the legendary version of it, you should see here that you're able to swim and move without issue. So um, again, hopefully incentive for you to go find all these new legendary pieces uh, so that you can enjoy them and have all the armor resistances that come from it. So for example, uh, things like the Plague Doctor, so you actually um, can uh, have uh, less... Uh, an uh, I apologize, so your immunity is higher. It works the same as a gas mask. So I wasn't able to get all of my utility items in, but I was able to actually bring some of those in from the actual, as part of the actual armors. So some of the armors actually have specific abilities built into them uh, so that you can actually go and have uh, unique abilities with each one. Uh, for the camera view, each one of the headsets has been, or each one of the helmets has been balanced to where you have an FOV field of view that will be affected by the different uh, helmets that you wear. So if you wear something big and bulky uh, that looks like it blocks out most of your view, uh, it will actually do the same when you put the helmet on. So you can see here the FOV is much, much more zoomed in uh, than if I take that off. I wanted to make that just kind of a fun little side thing. So it's not actually, you know, going to hurt you in game. It's just going to make it a little bit harder um, for you to see all the way around or have as much visibility. So if you're going for higher visibility, uh, you can actually use uh, some of the different gear uh, that has a wider range versus something like this where it's going to actually affect your vision. And then if you fell into the water with this sucker, you can see that it's actually going to sink you to the bottom pretty quick uh, and start to kill you as well because you're wearing a freaking metal tin on your head uh, and... Uh, and it punishes you for doing that. So just an example of some of the uh, some of the things that have come with this latest armor update. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoy these different armors. I tried to get them into the world to where you would be able to get some of the perks. So there are some of the ones that I've introduced, as I've mentioned, that are uh, part of the uh, actual 
uh, utility class. So even though they are armor, they're also part of the utility class because they have specific elements. Uh, so some ele elements will have things like rebreathers built into it. If it has rebreathers, if it has any form of mouth cover, uh, then that is actually uh, weighed inside the code. So like, for example, with this one, it's also meant to where it allows you to use the, I believe this is the one that allows you to have a rebreather built into it. So if you want to go into dark environments, uh, it will actually help you uh, have um, more protection from the atmosphere by wearing this with a mouth cover versus this. Um, I've also tried to adjust all the damages for each one. Uh, so for each uh, individual armor, it also received uh, some different resistances assigned to it to where, for example, I tried to keep them very realistic to where if you were struck with like a blade item on like a motocross helmet, it should de deflect the blow more, but things like blunt weapons to handed weapons should be able to actually crack the helmet um, and you get the idea that it's each one is balanced to where the elemental and the different resistances of that armor are balanced based on the actual physical at attributes of the helmet itself so as you find the different ones you should be able to protect yourself and guard yourself from different enemy types based on the type of coverage that you're going for so say for example you uh hate ranged damage uh you don't like how much damage renegade uh renegades are doing to you uh, inside the game you can actually wear uh, these armors and it will help you uh, by having uh, more protection from those arranged armors uh, i just noticed that it looks like a couple of them uh, for example for this one i'm gonna have to go update that it looks like it has uh, a weird glitch in it that looks like maybe it's the combination of these two things it is. And so some of that's going to happen. Uh, what I would recommend is, is that for each one of these armor combinations, I have not worn every single armor piece in the game uh, in combination with each other. Uh, as you find specific combinations that cause weird effects to happen, please just let me know um, where that basically made that armor unplayable or uh, it was less fun because uh, the player's movements started to get weird. Uh, so, so for example, with the uh, heavy armor I've made it to where the player should be able to actually move forward easier so if you actually are wearing big bulky pieces of metal and whatnot you can actually move forward a lot easier than you can move side to side you can still dodge uh, but only a specific amount it should huh? spoke too soon it's still letting me actually dodge that many times, but it also will slow down the amount of speed that you have when backing up and moving side to side. Um, when moving forward, you should be able to get some momentum. And when doing things like doing the uh, actual uh, glider, you can see here that you're basically losing stamina super fast. That doesn't mean that you can't still use your glider, and that's really the effect that I was going for here, is that you still be able to use all of your tools uh, as you would expect to. Uh, you just have different weights based on uh, what you're wearing. So say, for example, if we can find a rope here. I thought I would go do some parkour with these armors, and you can see that I can still get around. Um, it's just when it comes to specific... Uh, parkour activities such as climbing and uh, swinging you just have to be aware of the fact that it's taking more stamina to use this armor but I will mention that with some of them especially uh, you end up with a lot of damage resistances uh, and so by putting on these padded armors you can actually take a pretty serious beating uh, the challenge is, is that if you stick around too much and get overwhelmed at a low level of that gear uh, it will make it to where it's more difficult for you to escape um, so uh, you'll just need to be aware of that when you're uh, when you're running around so that way you kind of have an exit strategy uh, in place you more than likely will not be able to do most of the major quests with this armor active uh, rather with these types of armors kind of the idea the hope was is that you would carry them with you in your pack 
once you actually get to a specific boss or an area that you're trying to actually utilize the defenses of that armor, you'll pull them off. Kind of the hope is in the future is that that's where you have something like a backpack where you actually store uh, those different things inside of a backpack. And when you actually get to an enemy that you want to go fight, you pull out your heavy armor uh, and go fight your enemy based on uh, what gear you have available. So let's get one of the other heavy armors here and let's determine how well I can go shooting down this zip line. Zip line's good. Oh, I see. They're coming out to eat these uh, renegades. Still wish I was able to balance these guys out a little bit better to where they were able to behave a little bit better when they jump out like that. But they are, uh, it's still a balancing act of making sure that they don't become too overpowered. There will also probably be some amount of clipping uh, between the different uh, armors. Uh, that's ex that's to be expected. Uh, just let me know kind of where you start to notice certain clippings uh, and let me know if you can let me know the actual names uh, of the different gear that does so. Uh, then that will help me identify which ones to very quickly go change the visuals uh, to where they don't have those elements showing. So say for example, I'm sure if I, it's fine up until I climb. No, well, even then it did good. every now and then. I can find a rope here. That's what I was looking for. So like if I want to actually use this to uh, to get down, you can see here that's an example of trying to use super heavy armor and then also glide. Uh, that's the result is that it uses it kind of as a parachute to get down to the floor. And uh, I also have a lot of plans for uh, upcoming uh, gliders as well uh, if we can uh, if those can come around as well. That's something that I also wanted to try to actually make ones that would better support the heavy armors so you could actually have like actual uh, heavy duty parachutes versus um, the ones that are meant more for parkour. Kind of expand those systems a little bit. Well, I guess we're just not going to find a rope. But I think probably the biggest thing is is that this is a uh, is is kind of a test. I wanted to get this version out to you guys so that you could let me know what your thoughts were, um, because this is the kind of system that you would expect to see uh, in the future as well. Uh, to where it, kind of the idea is is that these items can actually go even more uh, immersive in the future. Uh, I'm just really curious for your feedback and I'm interested to know kind of what your play style preferences are uh, as far as using these different items with these different armor classes. Uh, and the clothing is also meant to here in the future once the clothing system comes out. Uh, it's meant to allow you to move around the city with essentially very similar to the systems that were uh, that were created by the original uh, armor to where you end up with these uh, armors that don't do as much protection uh, but they still allow you free movement uh, and so you can still actually take some hits while uh, continuing to <laughs> continuing to actually uh, be able to move so you can see there that's where <laughs> I tried to uh, to make the armor more realistic of what it would be like to go jump around in this heavy ass armor and take kind of a drop while wearing this heavy armor. 
It's been a lot of fun. Uh, this this update was actually a lot of fun to start creating. Um, the armor tool that I created at this time, I'm not looking to create any or uh, release any of the tools that were made uh, until the EULA has more information. Uh, and then here in the future, hopefully, uh, we can actually get those tools out to everybody because those tools were actually, they became a lot of fun to take the pain of the actual syntax errors and all the other things out of the process of making these new armors so that I could actually go create unique armor uh, that had different behavior. And that's really the uh, always the goal, right, is that you're actually able to go do what you enjoy um, rather than having to fight a bunch of bugs the whole time. So let's go ahead and remove that if I don't drown here. And then let me show you guys if we throw on heavy armor again. So actually, let me show you first. So no heavy armor. Let's see if I can get it. Nope. And then this is what it looks like with heavy armor. So just be aware of this next time you go swinging. There's also a scaling system for each one of these armors, uh, so <laughs> you can see there that you basically just don't get nearly as much uh, height off that swing. That was actually probably one of my more favorite ones. It is actually just making it to where like you can still do the parkour things, uh, but it's actually way more like realistic to what you're wearing. Um, so with each one of these armors, there is a scaling factor. Uh, after you get above the white items, uh, once you actually start to get towards the green tier uh, and the blue tier, these items will start to scale the closer you get to late game. Um, I've also made it to where in the loot systems, they will no longer spawn towards the late game. I actually updated a lot of the loot systems so that weapon, certain weapons and certain armors won't spawn in general uh, towards the late game. So you can kind of enjoy your game uh, without worrying as mu about as much white loot showing up. Uh, sorry for some of the... There was actually a couple of things I found when I was doing this last update uh, that made me uh, change my mind on some of the approach. Um, so that should be a little bit easier for you to uh, to be able to find these new armors without getting bogged down by all the di the different ones that uh, are basically useless. Uh, in the future, there will be a, uh, a a way to break down these armors, so these specific ones, to turn them into currency to buy with the armorer, uh, so that you create your own currency out of uh, dismantling the different armors uh, and being able to actually assemble new ones. Um, Again, uh, TBD. Um, but for that scaling, as you start to get towards the late tier of the game, it will actually allow some of these items to scale up from what they normally are. Uh, so even if you do find them, they will do a little bit more support or a little bit more uh, damage protection the later you get in the game. Once you get up to like your gold tier items, your violet items, those will actually be able to scale up much better and much higher. Um, so, for example, with these uh, with these other ones, you're looking at and I noticed that I guess I went too high. Uh, it's not actually able to show them, and so that's actually another note that I'm gonna have to make sure to pull down some of that scaling because uh, it looks like they actually reached a point that I wasn't aware that they would go. I'm assuming past 20 for protection is actually, uh, it will no longer show up on the list. Let's see if I'm anywhere close to that on these other ones. But uh, most of that armor, so from what I was seeing previously, uh, I have strong feelings that the actual armor rating that you see here doesn't actually work. Um, how you would expect it to. Um, it may work uh, a little bit, but the actual protection systems that are written onto the skill skills themselves um, are the actual defense and protection. Uh, so when wearing these different armors, uh, you should be able to actually take a pretty serious hit. This is another group that I guess they glitched out here at start. But yes, it does look like um, by wearing a combination of the heavy armors, the much stronger heavy armors, it looks like you can actually uh, mess up your ability to move back and forth. So uh, in a future update, I'll, I'll adjust that to where looks like certain ones are, are still okay, but 
yeah, for sure. It looks like I'll I'll need to balance that out a little bit better. And then lastly, let me make sure that you guys can see basically the difference between the damage here. So when you're wearing this super heavy armor, uh, and actually that's why, uh, is that that's one of the reasons it hasn't been released is that this putrid cover currently works for both uh, humans and zombies. Uh, and so the reason nobody was detecting me is because of, uh, because of that armor. So let's see here. You can see here that actually took a pretty good hit. And I'm pretty sure if I took this armor off and took the same hit, I would probably just... Well, we'll switch to like light armor. You can see that the hit is uh, much more severe. Now I did note that uh, some of the renegades appear to still have some of the damage glitch. Uh, where sometimes they do a lot of damage and then sometimes they do very little damage. Uh, something I would like to look uh, into a little bit further in the future, but for now uh, we're set where we're at. Well, I think this has probably been uh, one of the longer videos I've done. I know previously I had my roadmap video, but I wanted to get on here and kind of show you guys the new capability, the new update, uh, and talk to you guys a little bit about what's been going on. Uh, there is the uh, future plans for a boss uh, spawn as well, which I actually have a couple of them on me. So I'll just show you guys kind of a concept of what those can look like. Um, but I've got a boss system that I've been working on that's very similar to the Nemesis system. I won't describe it in too much detail as I'm still waiting for this EULA nonsense to go away. Um, but kind of the hope here was is that for the future um, that you would be able to actually get your buddies together and go create uh, a arena style spawn system here um, to where you would actually be able to go and hold out against waves and by defeating those waves uh, it would actually allow you to spawn a different boss uh, and unlock those so you would actually earn rewards for fighting the specific enemies that came from the different uh, bosses uh, and the different spawn systems. Oh, uh, nope. Not going to do anything against him. Let's head this way. All right. <laughs> Oh, okay, that was the regular zombie that fell. I thought that was the actual volatile that just fell down like that. But so, for example, with this one, if we start this battle. And these guys are just kind of a sample, but these are some of my, um, some of my world burners. and a way for you guys to get access to more flamethrowers and more custom content. Uh. <laughs> But this would allow you to spawn in different bosses and uh, and then over time just kind of basically uh, get different enemies that you continue to fight until that is uh, completed. Uh, and then the hope is, is that after it's completed it actually pops up a chest in the center. Uh, and then you actually can get your legendary loot or whatever it is from defeating that boss along with the potential of spawning another one of these bosses. Uh, so that you can continue to fight uh, these enemies uh, with your buddies or by yourself. Uh, but it was also another area where you would utilize your companions uh, to actually spawn some of the NPC companions and go fight enemies uh, there in the battle arenas uh, together with your favorite NPCs. 
So please uh, keep uh, keep an eye out on what's going on with Techland and the EULA. I hope to continue to design for you guys in the future. I do have several ongoing upcoming projects that I'm super excited about. So as many of you guys know, I'm actually a developer in real life. Uh, I actually have my own little game studio. I'm going to continue to use this momentum while we have the break, waiting for Techland to come back uh, to push forward on several projects that I've been super excited about for several years now uh, that I actually pushed a lot of them aside to continue to support and update this mod. Uh, now that things are going to slow down uh, with this new EULA update, I'm going to try to utilize this time to actually create some new cool things. Uh, and so I look forward to getting that over to you guys uh, in the future as well for those of you who are interested. Uh, and hopefully we can all continue uh, to enjoy fun new content uh, within multiple different games. I've appreciated the community that spawned around this mod mod uh, and the new fun ways to enjoy uh, Dying Light 2. I look forward to continuing uh, this journey with you guys. Thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, if you like what you see, make sure to check out the Nexus. Make sure to subscribe so you can find out more details of what's going on uh, with the mod. And also, if you really enjoy the mod and would like to check out some of the more uh, specialty content that's been created, make sure to check out the Patreon, uh, as I do have special content that's been created for that uh, so that you can enjoy the game in a different way and with your friends. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for your time. Stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you guys next time.